was wild, so this is gonna be like... Fire. <laughs> so, let's see how well fire does. And who we romance. Shepherd. Yeah, this is, this is literally the same opening. Here. Stop the largest tents, and the game is go inside. Xander Professor looks up from his paperwork. Come in, come in. Same guy. Thank you. I want to meet you. You must be exhausted after your long journey. Let, let me offer some refreshment. Water, coffee, something stronger, perhaps a little whiskey. Let's try something different. I love a cup of tea. I love a cup of tea if there's a pot on the go. Ah, I can tell you're new. Tea here tastes like cat pedal. I really don't want to drink it. Pours me a cup of coffee from this canteen instead. It's a good job. It's a good job. I like coffee. It's a good job. I like coffee. Okay. I don't expect you to be in a work till tomorrow, so just give yourself, get your kit, da -da -da, same shit. Thank you, sir. It sounds great. I think uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, there's, there's more to this guy than meets the eye. Whoa, that was a lot of rhyming. So there's cats in her. Da -da -da -da. Okay. I unpack, as I unpack and settle into my tent, I notice something odd, a little dug out under my bed. I reach in and pull it out. I inspect it and find a personal journal of a previous research assistant. The one before me. They must have forgotten it or left it behind. It's an absolute gold mine of information. It's going to get me up to speed with how all the work all, all the works around here in no time. However, something else is happening here on the island something that was troubling them. I get the feeling there's far more going on here than a professor would let me know. In spite of my increasing tiredness, I continue to read. The journal gets weirder and weirder to the point where I'm not sure whether I'm still reading or if I'm dozed off and I'm now dreaming of talking cats and kidnappings. Eventually, I lose a battle and drift off to sleep. start and it takes a moment to get my brain in gear I can hear scratching rustling paper coming from the tent flap it's a cat with something in its mouth suddenly I'm wide awake no it has a journal it has the journal wait but it has disappeared into the night oh we're gonna do this again aren't we before I know it I'm out in the cold night chasing it running with all my might I must get that book back. It has everything I need to know in it. Barefoot, dressed only in a t-shirt and shorts, running full speed in the forest in the dark of night. This is familiar. I know, I read this in the journal. Something similar happened to the previous assistant. Yet here I am, falling into the same trap. <laughs> I must be crazy. So do stop. I think I'm going to be sick. I realize, of course, I'm close to the danger zone. Everything goes black and I fall to the ground. I am now also cursed. Open my eyes, a calico cat. The one that I scanned yesterday is standing in front of me. She drops a journal in her mouth. Pass out. Now oh, here we go again. Yep, there, there's my previous guy. Look, they're all here. Hello, I say. Can you hear me? Are you okay? Here we go again. Move back a bit. Let him breathe. <laughs> Has it been bitten? The Sphinx cat is standing over me, staring as I open my eyes. Yes, definitely bitten. Look at his hand. Bring my hand up to my face. Now my... Vision, I can make out several deep scratches and puncture marks. The cats watch me intently. Is this real? I read something in a journal about kidnapping. Catnapping. Yeah. We're sorry. It was the only way. You, you stole my the journal. Oh, but I give it back to you. Why did you take it? What are you out here, sucker? <laughs> There's no need for rudeness, Kibbles. My eyes begin to clear. 
and I realize that if I can talk to these cats, not only is it all true, but it's already too late. I have the sickness. Uh, we need to talk. We need to have a talk, human. No, we don't. I already know what's going on here. I read all about it from your last victim. Now, now, Kara, that's not very nice. We prefer to think of you as our champion and friend. Murphy, you silver-tongued Irish charmer. My reputation goes before me. Oh, I know who you are. All are from the journal. So let's cut to the chase here. We just did that, dummy. You know what I mean. What happens now? Keep reading the notes. That will tell you all we know so far. Hang on, who are you? You're not mentioned in the journal figure it out. It's not my problem anymore. The new cat sinks, slinks off towards the, for the forest area. <laughs> oh, don't worry about them. They're preoccupied elsewhere. So what do you say? Are we going to help us or not? Yeah. Help the, help the kitties. I so suppose my fate is already sealed. I might as well do my best to help sort this mess out. Looking like a true champion. Let's hope this one's better than the last one. I thought the last one was pretty good, actually. Of course, Snooty would say that. Look at the little horns on her. She's horny. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far with discovering an, an, an antidote on what happened to our friends. Catalog starts beeping. Oh, my alarm. I have to get to work. Go. Huh. Run, huh? flee, you fools. And thanks from all of us. Alright. Let's see what insanity I uncover. Take it back. Jenna left. I'm concerned how little sleep I had. I wonder how... Um, I wonder if that's one of the effects of the tra feline transition. Imagine my, agil my agility levels will change. I'm strangely excited about getting to work on the antidote. It's sort of a challenge I love. <coughs> about to enter the lab and begin my legitimate work when the catalog beeps and message without contact. Oh, here we go. Wait, wait, what? Hey, I was wanted to read that. Ominous. I don't have time to work on this puzzle right out right now. I'm already going to be late for work. I wanted to read that! The professor is already working when I arrive, but miraculously, I'm not late. There's no fuss. I get through the day efficiently as possible, and... Head back to my tent as soon as I as soon as work is my work is done. I want to get to grips with finding out all I can as soon as possible. Who the? F I want to know. I want to know what that said. I couldn't read it. It went by so quickly. Bullshit. Okay, so let's do some recon. Recon 7. <clears throat> Snoots has brought me something intriguing. I better check it out. Fire, are you sleeping? You really ought to be awake by now. Snooty Booty, are you okay? What are you doing in my tent? All this lazing about is very bad for your complexion. To say nothing about the Dragging effects on the delicate tissue around your eyes, around the eyes. Is there something I can help you with? Possibly, I have something I want you to look at. Right now? What time is it? Time you were active. Come along. Well, at least let me get. At least let me get ready. Very well. Snooty Booty sits down and starts grooming herself. Now, for a moment, she looks up again. Why aren't you ready yet? I, um, can you leave the tent so I can get dressed? For goodness sake. Snoopy rolls her eyes and walks out. I get dressed resignedly and follow her. What do you think it is? I'm intrigued. We're on the beach staring at, uh, at a particularly buried bottle sealed inside a plastic bag. I look as those... It has only recently washed up. Oh, it looks as though it only recently washed up. Well, there's only one way to find out. I pull the bottle out of the sand, 
It has some kind of document or note in the bag along with a, the bottle. Message in the bottle. What is that? What is that thing? Read it to me. It's a good thing I'm just as curious as Snooty or I'd be feeling a lot more ir irritable by now. I carefully unseal the bag and fold the paper. I read the note out loud. Initial tests on most recent formula are encouraging. Subjects 6 through 18, 18 appear visibly younger. Moderate to severe side effects noted included increasing hair growth and marked mood alteration. Ah! Subjects... I thought... Uh, well, so subjects 1 through 5 had major complications. Some new, small tumors, skin irritation, partial blindness, and memory loss. Words, we need you to look into this, check the contaminants, and continue to deteriorate on the formula. Appear, visible, <laughs> appear visibly younger? She looks happy. Snooty booty, is that the most important thing you gathered from this report? You're quite right, Fire. We ought not, tr not to trust it. That note could have been written by anyone. We shall conduct our own experiment. Apply the cream to my skin. Have you lost your mind, Snooty Booty? Did you not hear what I read out? Tr uh, tumors, blindness, memory loss. Statistics bore me. You should know that by now. Let's live a little. I'm willing to take the risk. In the name of science. You took the risk on that skin cream you gave me, didn't you, Snooty Booty? Wait. Um. Dif different character. That makes no sense. It didn't happen to this guy. I did. What of it? And you developed welts all over your neck, didn't you? Yeah, maybe this happened on another day. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly there was a, a link, but as I recall, we never did rule out the coconut hair collar that Trixie made for me. I believe that was around the same time. Right. I'm seriously advising you not to do anything with this ointment. I'm going to get my kit bag from the lab and see what we can't work out. What this uh, if we see if we can't work out what this stuff is made of. I was hoping the lab would be free, but the, the professor is in there making some notes. Ah, oh, hello, fire. I thought you were taking the day off from the... Oh, okay. I thought you were taking the day off from the lab today. Oh, yes, I am, Professor. I just uh, wanted to check something. I can't take the test equipment away without the Professor getting suspicious. I'll have to come up with some sort of excuse. Make up an excuse. Well, I wanted to get ahead of some of the field work. There are some samples I found that I could that I think could be useful. Pick a fuel kit bag. Popper looks up from his work. Oh, what sort of samples? I can make it believable, but also invite no other questions. The samples are fecal. Fecal? Yes, a large poop, sir. It has rather interesting properties. Jolly good, off with you. Nailed it. I take the bag and... Beach becomes clear that Snooty Booty has managed to break into the ointment. She appears to have spilled some and is now busy rolling around in it. Damn cat! Snooty Booty? What were you thinking? This could be very dangerous. The only danger here is the ghastly sand sticking to my delicate skin. Do help me get rid of it, Fire. I try to wipe the sand off, but it's stuck like glue. Underneath the layer of sand, I can see her skin is very pink. There's no time to lose. I pick her up and run her into the ocean, trying to use the seawater to clean off as much of the ointment as I can. Put me down! What on earth? I've never been so humiliated in my life! Oh, this cat hates me now. She twists out of my grip and scampers off in a huff. I think I've got it all off, so I leave her to it. Now back to the samples. There's not much I can do here on the beach, so I'll just have to wait until Professor Popper has finished in the lab. Well, as quick as well, that was quick. As look what happened. The professor needed to retire to his tent earlier than usual. He has to read some research papers that arrived from the mainland this morning. So now, 
I can continue looking into this ointment. I begin by testing the substance for several common compounds found in the cosmetics, but it's negative for all of them. I widen the test for other organic compounds. I get a match. About 30% of the ointment is cat saliva? How they get how the hell do they get a cat to salivate? Catnip. If they're using saliva from cats on the island, they would be infecting all their test subjects with catification. But where have these other side effects come from? I run the ointment again, this time looking for known pharmaceuticals before I can get the results back. Snooty Booty comes in trotting in. I just thought you should know that the security guard is coming this way. You should make yourself scarce before he arrives. Not that I care what happens to you after you threw me into the ocean. <laughs> I have no time to finish the experiment now, but I will work on it later in the privacy of my tent. I take I take my things and run before Zane arrives. Do I have any more recon or do I need to do some more shit? Oh, there's Recon too. Trixie's been telling me about a strange phenomenon in a nearby rock pool. I decided it's probably worth checking out. I hear th the music has meows in it. That's cute. I've taken some time off today so Trixie can show me the water pools she's been telling me about. I have some sample bottles in my backpack along with some food and a blanket. It's nice, we can even have a picnic lunch there. So these pools appear to be different colors. They don't appear to be. Gumi? Gumi? They are. Well, we can't prove that until we've tested them. Reflection, refraction, and dispersion can play some fancy tricks on the eye. Poo to your testing. You take all the magic away, science person. It makes your world very dull, I think. Maybe you're right, Trixie. Let's wait and see what wonders you're going to show me, eh? That's right, this way. Disappeared from sight. I run off I run off the cliff. I run to this the cliffside where she was walking, and looking over the edge, I can see that she's jumped into a small rock shelf. About four meters down from where I'm, where I'm stood. Come on, you can do it. Don't be afraid of cat. I'm more concerned about how I'll get back up again, actually. There are kind of steps further along, but this way is closer to the entrance. Not wanting to appear too much of a killjoy, I clamber over the edge and lower myself down, dropping the last few feet. Impressive, you're getting a feline spring in your step. Hmm, if you say so. I'm worried I might have twisted my ankle, but I don't want to say anything. Follow me, Springy. She disappeared again. It's like keeping up with a jackrabbit. Follow my voice! Suddenly an alarming sound is coming from between the two rocks. Rock faces. It's a high-pitched screeching and very loud. It squeezes through the crevice and I'm in what looks like a cave without a ceiling. Tricks, stop! The sound, the sound so amplified in this closure has become deafening. Sorry, Humi! But it feels so good, I have a try. What? Yell, shout, scream, sing! At the top of your voice, loud as you can. Oh, um, really? I feel self conscious, but I'm dying to give it a go. You only live once, and it's so fabulous! She makes the noise again. This time I join in. It's fantastic. The acoustics are something else. It's like an amphitheater. Eventually we run out of steam and I flop to the ground. Exhausted, but it is so ready to. After we caught our breath, I'm ready to push onwards. We'd better get on if we don't want to be back too late. We're here. I'm surprised I was expecting something more impressive, I suppose. This is the place. I look around, and for the first time I notice several small pools of water, not much larger than puddles, around the edge of the enclosure. 
Oh, I see. Been down to the nearest pool and see straight away that it's the deepest red. It looks like blood. Huh. Look at mine. Like liquid sky. Across the opposite side where Tricky is sitting, and sure enough, there's the clearest, richest blue water. Melted emeralds. Again, I follow her and find another pool as green as spring foliage. And another deepest, the deepest purple. One of orange, yellow, pink. Well, it certainly is amazing as you said, Trix. How strange that they're all so different. What's causing it? It has to be a trick of the light. Put your hand in. Well, I'm not sure that's a good idea. There could be any number of bacteria making this happen. Let's not touch until we're sure we're safe. I've done it lots of I've done it lots. I'm fine. It's fine. Glance over and sure enough. For a little pause in the golden colored water. Somewhat reassured, I scoop up the blue uh, scoop some of the blue water up and sniff it. it smells wonderful. As though it has been perfumed. What is that smell? It's weirdly familiar. Take a bottle collecting the waters. The theory about the light is, blo is blown, I line the bottles up together, and they each retain their original hue. Something, something is dying this water. I can't wait to get back to the lab and run some tests. We can go back the easy way if you like. Follow me. We get back along the rock shelf and go past the spot we jump down. On the way here, further along is an ascent, just like Trixie said, but would hardly call it steps. Someone has clearly tried to make a trail here that's all a bit rough and ready. Further along still, I can make out a large, empty drum. Metal drum. It's rusted, obviously discarded some time ago. I get closer and see that there's a tap near the base and the remains of a label. But I can really make out the words. I take a picture of it with my catalog to decipher later. The perfume I smelled in the cave seems to be stronger here. I am very intrigued. Trixie couldn't be less interested in all of this. She's happily skipping ahead looking for a good picnic spot for us. I will have to be patient with my investigations. to my CV, but it looks like today is my lucky day. Well, let's do it. I put on my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swab, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Oh, of course, treats! This music. Let's just take a second and listen to this. Like all of the all of the, the voice meow sounds are adorable. Like wow. I'll leave the tent and head to the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents on the way. Meow meow meow! Call out the blazing subjects as I enter the lab. Looky, looky what I've got! I shake the bag of treats and a small lab erupts with hungry meows. If you want these, you'll have to behave, okay? Open the first crate, home of the grouchy old Mr. Bumble, and gently lift him onto the counter to be groomed. Morning, Grumpy! Check your ears. The breeze, lovely. I have a feeling you may be discharged in the next day or two. <clears throat> he was brought in with a mid-infection, slight temperature, weepy eyes, and he seems to have recovered remarkably well. In fact, I am going to recommend to Professor Popper that we release him by the end of the week. We give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I begin the brushes and matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? 
enough fur hair to make another cat. Mr. Bumble begins to get agitated and lets out a displeased grumble. I know, I know. It's very annoying. Just gotta trim you up a bit and then you go back to sleep. He resignedly lets me cut some of his hair, some of the hair around his bum and the back of his hind legs. Aren't you a good boy? Here you go. Om nom nom. Meow. I pour some of the little fish shaped treats into the counter and the little ragamuffin practically inhales them. Now let's get you back into your cozy crate. I tuck them away and open the next one. Your turn, socks. Just a cut and color, yeah? I snort in my own joke and begin brushing the little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble. He keeps trying to bite the brush. He's playful. Hey, don't make me get the harness, Socks. It's no fun for either of us. The cat seems to understand and settles down, only giving the brush an occasional nip when he thinks I won't notice. Oh, hello. What's this? I notice a little red patch on his neck. Just under his chin. Oh no, we don't have bot flies, do we? Poor Soxy. I take the magnifying glass out in my inner pocket and examine the inflamed area closer. Ouch! Sox begins to struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. It's okay, Sox. I'm just looking. I stroke the little cat and try to calm him down. I hate using sedatives on my subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I'm able to get a closer look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything living under here. I'm relieved I don't have to deal with any bot flies. Hmm, looks strange. It's like a rash or a sore, but I'm not sure how or where he could have picked it up. I'm worried about how to proceed. Should I just clean it? Uh, should I clean it with some saline solution and let the air get to it? Or should I put some Professor Soothing Cream 116 on it and wrap it in gauze? Ooh, this is a hard question. Um, we're gonna cream it. Cream 116 is designed for conditions like this, so I suppose that's what I should use. As I approach, Socks arches his back and puffs up his fur. I'm surprised at his reaction. He's normally quite a brave little soldier. Maybe it stings? Dab a little bit of cream onto my arm and see what the effect is. After a few minutes, I realize I'm a quit. I'm being... What a quit I'm being. A cream designed for a cat is hardly going to affect my skin. I get on with the job in hand and apply the cream to a very peeved Socks. Later that evening, I noticed a small patch of pale skin on my arm and realized the hair has rubbed off. Well, yes! New unlocks! Research 6. Look at the kitties. That one looks fucking insane. We're at 20%. Antidote. Trixie and Kibbles have brought me to the edge where the pools of colored water collect. We call them rainbow pools. It's a beautiful day and there's a vivid rainbow across the sky. I did hit rest, right? Kibbles is all over the other side from me, shouting. Wow, look at this! Come over here! He sounds further away than he is. My hearing isn't quite right, but I don't mind. What is it? You need to see it. Suddenly beside him, looking over the edge of the cliffs where I look down. And when I look down, the sea is further away than I expected. It's such a long way down. Do you see? A little push from behind me as I begin to fall, I hear Trixie laugh. Curiosity did what? And I'm not falling at all. I'm floating. Light as a feather. Huh. Fly, little bird, fly away home. This is the best feeling ever. I'm going higher up now, towards the rainbow. I'm going to touch it. I think we're on drugs right now. Mind you don't get scorched by the sun. 
feel myself being shaken. Yumi, are you... You really ought to go in now. It's too hot out here to sleep. I want a patch of scrub grass behind my tent. I'm just having a moment of shut-eye when the... in the sun. But I must have fallen asleep. Oh, thank you, Trixie. I smell the calico cat as I... Serpenticidal, whatever that word is, scratch at the pickle... Pr pickle? At the prickly heat on my legs. Who are we gonna romance? We got Floofy Butt, McMurphy, Floofy Butt or McMurphy. I wanted want to date Trixie. Okay, well, why not? I'm not sure what to expect, but I've come to the forest with Floofy Butt for what I assumed would be a pleasant way to spend my afternoon off work. But I have now discovered that he's billing it as, a, as an informant, more formative afternoon of instruction and practical participation. Look at his eyes, he looks fucking stoned. That sounds suspiciously like a lecture to me. Oh well, as Professor Popper would say, a scientist must keep an open mind. This is something I would normally do alone. But you strike me as a like-minded soul. So, interested in both gastronomic and anatomic pleasures. Mm-hmm. Perhaps th now would be a good time to lay down the blanket I asked you to bring. We don't want to put that tender skin of yours under duress. Um... Lay the blanket on the ground awkwardly and wonder where he's going with this. Relax, fire. This doesn't usually take very long. Uh, suddenly, without warning, there's a loud plop as a bird plummets out of the sky into the blanket. I told you so. Oh my, it, it's dead. That's a doornail. But what happened to it? Force field, of course. Now enough foolish questions, fire. <laughs> Let's get started, shall we? Looks like the lecture is from my uni. What exactly are we doing here, Floofy Butt? I told you, don't use that ridiculous name. I prefer Major, if you please. What are exactly are we doing here, Major? This is my little surprise. I'm a bird fancier. Oh, and you fancy your bird's dead? Why? All the better to practice my other pursuit. I know I'm going to regret asking this, but what pursuit would that be, Major? <laughs> I'm a self-taught pathologist. Pathologist. Somewhat rudimentary. Don't you know? But I can come find my way around the innards of the average seagull with remarkable dexterity. Wow. Yes, well, whatever floats your boat. I'm interested in crossword puzzles myself. Not everyone's a cup of tea, but it occupies a wet afternoon. Okay, back to the task at hand, Fire. I shall now begin the autopsy. Keep your wits about you. There will be questions at the end. Ah! I knew this was a lecture. Floofy Butt pings out a razor sharp claw and begins going to town on the bird. Yum, 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 yum. <clears throat> Jesus! Look at that. Let's take a minute for the, just look at that picture. Incursion from sternum to base. On first examination, the skeleton appears to be typical. I note there is no break in the neck, indicating that the force field rather than the fall killed the bird. I feel rather queasy. Oh, really? Yes, point of interest. Sometimes the initial zap a bird receives from flying into the force uh, field merely stuns them, and then the impact of the fall which provides the fatal blow. This chap, however, appears to have suffered cardiac arrest. You can see from the size or lack thereof of the heart that even a mere jolt could 
be enough to induce seizure. Having removed the tiny organ, Major has now begun digging around inside the carcass as we're rummaging in a uh, lucky dip. Now removing trails for further examination. Oh, you get a better look, Fire. It's rather revealing. I can see something in the stomach sack. Stomach sack? It looks like... Oh my, it's gold. Our lucky day, Fire. Here, have a look. It's some kind of nugget. It's a turd. No, thank you, Major. I'm not in the mood for playing with the contents of a seagull's stomach. Don't be ridiculous. This is not a game, Fire. I may remind you that we are in the middle of a very serious post-mortem, and I expect you, as my assistant, to maintain professionalism. My stomach is doing flips as I hold this object between thumb and forefinger. What is this thing? It's so small. It kind of looks like a... Cripes, it's a tooth! Major, it's a gold tooth! Ah, good find. You're a natural. I can't help but wonder why a seagull would have a tooth, a gold tooth in its stomach. It's just eating people! It's not a seagull. It's a demon gull. Presumably, Major, this is the mouth of a... This is from the mouth of a human. I think you're probably right. So how did the kid and the seagull... <clears throat> what an inquiring mind. You would make an excellent apprentice. If you like, I could pass you on... I can pass on to you the skills I have acquired. That would be a feather in your cap, huh? I resign myself to the fact that he's not going to be drawn to speculation. Okay, well, I'll bear that in mind, maybe. I don't have the heart to tell him that I came from... <clears throat> I came top of my class at veterinary surgery. And now, to the victor, the spoils. Don't be shy, I've already carved. Oh, oh gosh, do you mean... Of course, tuck in. We won't stand on ceremony here. It's a good one, too. Plenty of fat. I have to think fast. Do I really want to eat a raw seagull carved by a cat on the forest floor? Yeah, we're going to make some excuses here. There's no way that's going to happen. I don't want to hurt his feelings, but equally, I can't afford to be laid up with salmonella poisoning through people-pleasing, the uh, cat-pleasing even, even. Oh no, silly me. I just didn't realize we'd be having lunch. I ate before we came out here. Well, just a taste then. Uh, major, tempting as it looks, I simply couldn't touch a single bite. Nonsense, fire. I insist. I would feel very poor, uh, I would feel a very poor host indeed if my guests refused my hospitality. Oh no, this is going to be harder than I thought. Fluffy Bud is standing in front of me, presenting what looks like a tiny liver on his palm of his paw. I need to think fast. Oh, that's my catalog. I can't hear any... It's on vibrate. The professor's calling. What bad timing. Can you believe it? I'm gonna have to head off. But our feast! It's a shame. So sorry. Please go ahead without me. Oh, another time then? I'm tempted to make excuses, but notice the eager look at his little face and feel the pull on my heartstrings. Oh yes, without a doubt, another time. I toast you. I, then I toast your health. Major pops liver in his mouth and starts cat chewing in a very unattractive way. I realize I'm stirring and catch myself. Enjoy, bon appetit. Uh, bye. I make a swift and graceless retreat. Gonna have to romance the cat some more. We chose Floofy Butt. We're going with Floofy Butt. Do you hold your hands still, Fire. I can hardly see a thing with you shaking like that. Hold the binoculars stable in front of Floofy Butt's tiny cat face. He looks ridiculous. It's like you're not even trying, Fire. You're shaking like a leaf. My hands are totally steady, Major. Even consider it. Could just be your eyesight? I'll have you know, I have the keen eyes of a goat. Goats aren't exactly known for their vision, Major. That's just because the world is full of ignorami. Well, what can you see? I can only see a couple of Mueller's right lazing about. Of course, 
scratching at their fleas, filthy things, I tell you. <laughs> what? One of the bigger ones is emptying its bladder. That could mean that they do eat and drink on a regular schedule. Okay. And if we were able to find out where their water supply is, we could lace it with a mild sedative and bring the incapacitated sample to the beach and... Please don't finish that sentence. No cats will be harmed during this mission. Oh, please. The subject will not be harmed. Just slightly bewildered for a day or two. But why, Major? Well, examine it for a start. Also, I'd like to see how they react when one of theirs goes missing for a change. Major, I only agreed to help you with this on the promise that you will not attempt to exact any kind of retribution on the elders. Examination is one thing, but if you can't keep your end of the deal, then I'm sorry, I'm going to have to withdraw. Okay, okay, I'll just observe. I replaced some binoculars in front of 50 bucks keen goat eyes. <clears throat> well, well, what do we have here? Found something? Can you believe I have? There's a few mu <clears throat> elders here who seem to be meditating. Are you sure that they're not just sleeping? Take a look, will you? Tell me they aren't meditating. <laughs> I adjust the binoculars and suit my eyes, and I'm quite taken aback when what I see. Fluffy Butt is right. The cats aren't sleeping. They're sitting in a circle around what is by far one of the stranger landmarks on the island. A, a large state of Beset. Professor Popper has always dodged my questions about what on earth this, a statue of the Egyptian cat goddess of war is doing on the island. I'm even more intrigued now. The cats seem to be listening or contemplating or even meditating. Well, Major, I'm sure there's a perfectly, perfectly good explanation for their behavior. Cats often behave quite strangely, I've found. Well, they're strange and then they're strange. And my experience teaches me that the type of strangeness that this class <clears throat> are afflicted with is beyond acceptable. I believe the only way to protect us all is total disassociation. Major, do you hear yourself? We're here practically trespassing on their territory so that you can spy on them while they're doing whatever it is they're doing. And you want disassociation from them? One must know one's enemy, Fire. How are you? How are they your enemy, Major? They've never done anything to you. Oh no? Those Mullers are wholly responsible for the problems on this cursed island. And it's about time they were held accountable. They are the carriers of the cat virus. If it weren't for them, you wouldn't be afflicted with this illness. Oh, is that so? Because I simply remember it was you lot who deliberately put me in danger in the first place. The older cats are just cats. Just cats, huh? Hmm, I see. I realize what I just said, and although I didn't intend it that way, the Major has taken it. I can see how wounded he is. I feel conflicted. On one hand, I want to take this, the stand against his bigotry is not helping our progress, and I believe it may end up ruining our friendship. On the other hand, I know he's a good heart, as Trixie says. He's just stuck in his ways, and it would be wrong for me to start pushing my views on him. Perhaps I can lead by example and practice a little more tolerance myself. Uh, let's be diplomatic. Oh, come on, Major. I didn't mean it that way. You know, I have the highest regards for all cats, and in particularly you. And I for you, Fire. However, I must say I find increasingly difficult to fathom how such an intelligent person as yourself fails to recognize such obvious truths. Okay, perhaps I haven't given you a fair hearing. Maybe my own opinions got in the way. So go on then. You have my full attention. Teach me, Major. Well, that's more like it. Pulls himself up and fluffs out his fur. Gives him an uh, air of self-importance. So much that, in spite of my promise, 
be open-minded, I've already felt a bit irritated. You see, what you and the other pedestrian-minded inhabitants of this island will not will not do is look at the undeniable evidence that this species is the cause of all of our problems. The evidence being, well, firstly, they have segregated themselves from us and created a ghetto where we have been made unwelcome. That is an act of hostility. I want to point out that they haven't created anything. They've always been there, but I'm practicing tact and diplomacy. Secondly, they carry the virus. Feline transitional gene. Quiet! They're trying to infect everyone. Make us all like them, and they will have their way, too, if we don't fight back. I bite my tongue and resist, tell, and resist telling him that it's far more likely that they are not trying to infect anyone. They simply want to live and let live. They probably don't even understand the effect their body, body fluids have on other species. Thirdly, it should be obvious to everyone that they have been have made no attempts whatsoever to learn our language. Oh God! <laughs> they took our germs. If they were congenial towards us, they would have surely tried to communicate with us by now. I tr try to keep my voice mixed. I know how frustrating it is when you can't make yourself understood, Major. Very frustrating. I'm glad you see that fire. At least I have one ally in all of this. Maybe now is the time to strike. You know what, Major? I'll bet with your superior intellect and my research skills, we might be able to find a way to learn their language. I hold my breath. Why on earth would you want to do that? To communicate? Have you lost your mind, Fire? To say nothing of your sense of smell? Huh? I doubt they have anything worthwhile to communicate. They are no more to us as an insect under a microscope. Oh. The smell, however, is... That is rather overpowering. Shall we call it a day here and go somewhere where the air is more pleasant for our lunch? I'm feeling very uncomfortable now, and I want to get away and think. Actually, Major, I have to go back. I'm on feeding duty. If you like, I can put something by for you. Very well, I should call by the mess tent later. As I make my way back to camp, I can't help feeling an odd. I ought to have handled this differently. I wonder if honesty may have made more progress with Floof. Democracy just feels like pandering to him, really. Ah, you know what? I stand by what I chose. Alright, let's continue our romance. Alright, Floof. How can I piss you off today? We've been walking for ages, Major. I don't have much longer before they'll expect me back. Almost there. It needs to be as close to the danger zone as possible. The detour, snoopers. Few cats, and even fewer humans come out this far. Which ensures that my deposits are safe. What? Deposits? This is an act of trust. You understand? I believe that our recent disagreement and resulting reconciliation has made our bond of camaraderie stronger than ever. And I would like to solidify our reunion with the sharing of something quite private and important to me. Oh no. I feel slightly awkward and mumble incoherently in response. Uh, yes. <clears throat> well, uh, what's past is past. Water to the bridge and all that. I'm delighted, though, that you have renewed your... That you have reviewed and modified some of your stronger opinions, Major. Updated your map, so to speak. Indeed, though, for the record, I'm still uneasy about the Mew elders, but I grant that finding a way to speak to them might provide more insight than I deserve. Well, we really are on the same page now, Major. We've come to a halt. I can smell the pungent scent of the elder cats. I've not been this close to them since the first night, and it makes me uncomfortable. But I feel surprisingly reassured to be with Floofy Butt. This is it. We must be completely silent now. So you have to cease that un unattractive sound you're making. 
I'm out of breath, Major. I can't help it. What I'm about to show you has taken a long time and a lot of effort on my part. If anyone else should get wind of its whereabouts or even its existence, are we going to go back to the future? Yes, okay, Major. I get it. I swear on the most <clears throat> prestigious of pinky promises that I will not utter a word to anyone about whatever I see today. Fluffy Butt seems satisfied and makes an effort to straighten himself out before motioning towards a large tree. <clears throat> this, my dear, is my treasure. Oh, my goodness, what a, a handsome tree you have here there, Major. Very tall and, uh, and proud looking. Congratulations. Oh, for goodness sake, come over here. Fluffy Butt leads me around the enormous tree to its hidden side, which has a large hollow in it. Looks like it leads to a tunnel. Good God, man! Are you digging an escape route out of here? What on earth are you twittering about? Use your eyes more and use your mouth less, my dear. I then notice a hidden, that hidden in the dark recess of the tree is the outline of a large object which my eyes won't allow me to see clearly. What is it, Major? Don't be shy, Fire. Get in there and have a proper look. I have no choice but to crawl in to the cavity for a closer inspection. I run my fingers over the item and deduce that it's made out of an old splintering wood that has cold metal adornments on this other side, on either side. I use them to drag it out of the tree, and in half light, I am somewhat unsurprised to see it as an old-fashioned treasure chest. I would expect nothing less from a major. Fluffy Butt is looking at me expectantly. Well, open it, my dear. You needn't worry about the lock, it's quite broken. I just instructed. Oh my giddy aunt! Major, how on earth? The chest is full of the brim of all sorts of shiny things jewelry, gems, coins, trinkets, ornaments, baubles, and all matters of curos. Fluffy Butt lets out a low laugh. I mean, Regale you, human, with my vast adventures and conquests. Settle down. Yeah, but allow the Major's voice to wash over me as I play with some items. Fripperly, fri frippery? From the chest. Ah, that coin you're holding. There's a very interesting story attached to it. You know how old it is, Fire? I do believe the date on it should still be legible. I remember the night I found it gone for a walk along the beach. It was blustery and dark. I feel for the first time how exhausted I am. The walk, is, the walk has sapped me of my energy. As I fought with the elements, I look ahead and notice the sky is much darker laying down, although I don't remember doing so. And victorious to thunderous applause, I hear a low rumbling sound. Thunder? And a flashing behind me, my now closed eyes. Surely it's a storm, but there's no rain. That's odd. No wet, just warm and dry and hard to breathe. And bellowed defiantly, you cannot have them. But the mules were already encircling. I should really get up now. Oh, it seems my eyes won't open. That's a pity. As I bit into the still beating heart. I do believe I'm paralyzed. That's a shame. I try to move my fingers. Nope. They're not listening to me. What the fuck? <laughs> Did we just go on a drug trip? Look at his name. Flurfy Bert. Wake up. We have to get you out of here this instant. Up you get. That's it. Come on. As I come to, the world looks dark and distorted. I must, well, I must be walking because trees are passing my line of vision. My hands hurt. I look down at them. They're pressed firmly into the earth, one moving in front of the other. I must be crawling? I don't know how much time has passed, but I wake up in the sand. I inspect my blistering hands. Fluffy butt is sitting next to me, facing the sea. Did I dream all that? Oh, you're awake. No, I'm afraid you weren't dreaming. What happened? It was my fault. I took you too close to the danger zone. 
At your current state, you couldn't handle it. My current state? Your feline transition, transition is still in its early stages. It seems to be progressing particularly slowly. So I'm still very vulnerable to the effects of the older territory. Right. I was foolish. I didn't think. I was too interested in myself, my stories, my treasure to protect you properly. Please forgive me. It's fine. Oh, it's okay, Major. Don't upset yourself. I had a lot of fun until the whole blacking out thing. Elizabeth looks generously, genuinely pleased. Really? I have been told I'm a very good... Contour? Contour. Contour. Okay, whatever. One of the best. How much did you hear? I'm sorry? How many of the... Of my antidote, antidotes did you hear before you succumbed? I would be happy to repeat anything you missed. <laughs> oh. oh, no, really, Major. I'm fairly certain I heard them all. Well, you're, if you're quite sure... I am. And besides, I think I have a migraine coming on. Well, in that case, you must allow me to nurse you until you are fully recovered. Okay, Major, it's a deal. Um, Major? Yes? Why do I have earrings in my hair? I had to pelt you with jewelry to get you to wake up. Oh, of course. If you don't mind, Major, I think I need to get back to sleep. I'll lay down in the warm sand and go into a ball. Like a kitty! I'll be here when you wake up. I drift off and dream that I'm a cat. Now, today we have to rest. I rushed out into the forest on Pluvibut's insistence that I meet him at the location of his treasure chest. After the incident, we called on Murphy and Kibbles to help us drag it to a new spot, further away from the older territory. Which is strange, because didn't he, like, want no one to know about it? Major, are you okay? I was in the middle of preparing lunch when I received your urgent summons. Fine. I was pawing through my collection just now and couldn't help but reflect upon some of our adventures. <clears throat> Oh, so you dragged me away from the kitchen to reminisce? Indeed. I've grown rather fond of our expeditions together. I do. Seem to find more unique articles when you accompany me. You've trained me well, Major. Any advancement I've made in the treasure hunting field is entirely thanks to you. <clears throat> yes, I mean, no. You have a natural ability. Rather impressive. You flatter me, Major. No, not, not at all. I'm a fair cat. It is my belief that good workers deserve just reward. Reward? Indeed. And so I felt I would... It would only be right to let you keep an item from my inventory. So that you may start a collection of your own. That's kind of sweet. That's too kind of you, Major. I'm touched. <clears throat> yes, well. Let's have a look, shall we? You may choose whatever you like, my dear. Absolutely anything. Appear into Fluffy Butt's treasure chest. All the gems and bits are precious metal, spark uh, precious metal sparkle and glint in the sunlight. I gently move some of the more bijou trinkets out of the way and dig deep for the good stuff. Wow. I grasp a red gem almost the size of my fist. I wonder if it's really before I begin to examine it, Flippy Butts has swiped it away in his palm. No idea what that is doing in there. I think he, I see how this is going to go. Anything else, Fire? Whatever you like. How about this? I untangle a string of pearl, creamy, and iridescent, whatever that word is. Clearly, clearly very good quality. Even to my untrained eye, Flippy looks uncomfortable. Yes, they're rather special, aren't they? I do have a particular fondness for them. I let them off the hook as my eye catches the sight of something dull and cheap looking. Major, what on earth is this? A filthy bobble sticks out of the sore thumb. Amongst the bobbles, Floofy usually likes to collect. Oh, that! Heavens! I forgot all about that thing. It might suit you. 
If you shake it, you will hear something rattling in there. I do believe it contains a note or a script of some kind. He's selling it to me. Silly, really. I did get it into my head that I find to find a way to open that bottle, but the cork is wedged in tight. I choose this to start my collection, Major. Really? That old thing? I can tell he's absolutely delighted. Yes, and I have an idea how to open it. Go on. You have my attention. Whip out my apron and loosely wrap it around the bottle, then smash it. And, and ceremoniously against the side of a tree. <laughs> Good gracious fire! How lively of you! I have a feeling the real treasure is this. Carefully pick the parchment off the from looks of shards, the glass, and cast a cursory, cursory eye over the faded scribbles. It's message in a bottle. This can fill in so many blanks about this history of this place. A piece of paper? Oh, Major, this is not just a piece of paper. This is better than anything I could have hoped for. Well, if that's what you dream to be treasure, then please be my guest. Thank you so much, Major. I grin from ear to ear. I must go now, though. I'm late for lunch duty. Sadly, kiss Fluffy Butt on his furry head before dashing back to the base. I just kissed a kitty. Yeah, we got some new recon. Alright, probably has to do with the note. Yes, I think it's time to take a look at the message in the bottle Fluffy Butt found. Let's do it. The ink is surprisingly well preserved. The only obstacle in my understanding of this letter is deciphering the screwed, scrawled scribble. <clears throat> some words I can make out. Punished, God, and presumably the nature, the signature at the bottom, Bill. I can make out some other words, but they appear to be badly misspelled, or possibly not even English, but some other hybrid language, maybe colloquial. That is a weird word. I spent an hour or two, though it feels much longer, attempting to translate each character's syllable into my notepad. I. Obsessively write and rewrite words until a sentence takes shape, and I am eventually left with something quite legible. Once I am satisfied that each word is correct and each sentence has meaning, I read it through from being the end. To whom her finds this bottled message, we have been cursed. We be judged for our sins. We wrecked it. on the rocks. I couldn't tell you where we be. I should do. I should use a uh, pirate for this but but I think it is hell the cats they are everywhere and they won't forgive us they know what we've done my guts burned for food and I had no choice I had to eat I regret it now God help me I do oh did he eat a cat now I am cursed but the boys are too and the boys are too the cats are eating us slowly from the inside it burns more than hunger it burns me rotten they stare at me all the time with their yellow eyes. They know what we've done. They are getting retribution justice. Is that it? Okay, here we go. God help me, I pray for death. If you find yourself in the path of this infinite island, turn back. Don't do what we done. Leave them. This is their island. I need my little Lucy to know I love her. I'm sorry. Pedal Bill. I read it again. And then again. But it seems the more I read it, the less it makes sense to me. It makes perfect sense to me. They got fucking cursed. I wonder if reading aloud might help me understand it, like in school. We've been cursed. Judged. We be judged for our sins. We wrecked on the rocks. So their ship crashed, and they survived. I'm not sure if they're very lucky or very unlucky. Cats won't forgive us. We had to eat. I had no choice. My skin prickles with goosebumps. Who knows what lengths anyone might go to in order to survive? But I'm capable of a lot more than I'd like to believe. Sat here in comfort of my sat here in the comfort of my tent, but this? My stomach turns at the thought of it. I think I understand. 
what Bill means. But the next part is less clear and still more disturbing. They're eating us from the inside. Like food poisoning? The thought of that is bad enough. I've eaten a few dodgy prawns in my time. I shudder at the memory, but I can't help thinking he means something else. Something worse. Surely the place Bill is talking about is here, in the island, the Infinite Island. I've never heard anyone refer to this place as the Infinite Island before. Most people call it Cat Island or the Forlorian Island. Formerly, perhaps, this crew were the first humans to step foot in this place? How long have the cats been here, anyway? The litter seems to be at least 100 years old, and the cats were pretty well established then, by the sound of things. The cats in this note must be the elders. I suddenly feel another pang of sympathy for Bill and the crew. I know how frightening the elders can be. I decide not to tell Fluffy Wet about the contents of his gift. It would only add to his paranoia. I instead promise myself that I will look into this further another time. Woo, we're learning! We're learning things! So let's do, let's do the romance and then we'll do some more research. Alright, Fluffy Butt. We be, we be pals. I'm taking a late stroll along the beach, walking off my dinner, when I spot a familiar shape in the distance. Major? He begins slinking away, but I'm sure he must have heard me. Hey, wait! Louis but stops and makes no move towards me. Oh, fire, I was just enjoying this lovely evening. It's dark and stormy. Is everything okay? He seems very distracted. Yes, yes. All in good order. I haven't seen you for a while. A paranoid person might think they were being avoided. Well, it's a good thing that you're not paranoid then, isn't it? I suppose so. There's an awkward silence. Well, must be it must be getting on. Mice to catch, you know. Um There aren't any mice here, Major. Just a turn of phrase, fire. Well, I'm sure you have things to be getting on with. Actually, I have some time. If you care to stroll together. The ginger tom shifts uncomfortably. Um, actually, I have other plans. Really? He's not forthcoming with the details, and just as I suspect he's making up excuses, I hear a long growling sound coming from the direction of the forest. Then, to my surprise, Flukovit lets out a similar call, and his demeanor changes. Sorry, Fire. I really must go. Oh, I see. The penny finally drops, and I realize he has a date with another cat. I feel rather embarrassed. Why, Major? I'm pleased for you. Really? Of course. I must say, I'm glad to have your blessing, Fire. I believe you and I have become good chums over the time we spent together here. I rather think you would like... I rather think you would like my new companion. They are so forward-thinking, and they always endeavor to challenge my lazy prejudices. I think you'd approve. Is he with an elder cat? I do. I do, Major. It sounds like you found a real catch. I notice a slight feeling of regret rise within me. But I try to muster up a smile. Thank you, Fire. You're a good friend. His eyes focused on where the sound came from, and I can tell he's itching to go. <coughs> Have fun, Major. I rather think I will. And off he darts, moving faster than I've ever seen him move before. Well, because he's going to get laid. I stand still for a moment, watching the place he's disappeared, uh, the place he's disappeared to, and I feel a wave of utter loneliness wash over me. Aww. Okay, he's a cat. All right, we're gonna rest. Okay, research six. Time for some serious testing in the labs. Intrigued to see what kind. Okay. My stomach's queasy. I really don't want to do all this. It's strange. I'm used to treating subjects with medication and injections. <clears throat> Something about this doesn't feel right. Hello, you. Smile at the gentle cat on the table in front of me. I 
look at the syringe in my hand. Return to the professor. What are we testing for with these meds again? He looks up from his desk. Is there a problem, Fire? I've already told you. It's supposed to stimulate hair growth. Why do we need to stimulate hair growth? Why indeed? However, ours is not the question why, Fire. The likes of us, the likes of you and I perform the tasks set out by the people who pay our wages. Such is life, huh? Professor returns his work, and I understand the conversation is over. Look back at the little cat, his name is Smokey. He's a loco, light, whatever cat with short, very short, fine hair. Real sweet. I suppose the professor's right. This is my job, and though I feel terrible, I find a way to ignore the pangs of guilt and inject Smokey with the medication. He squeals, but it's quickly over, and he can return to his cage. How long does this usually take? Professor looks at the slightly irritated. I don't know, Fire. But you're being paid to find out find that out, aren't you, my dear? Oh, yes, of course. Make a note of the time and observe the cat. After five minutes, there's no noticeable change. Ten minutes, still no change. After half an hour, I notice the his hair looks a little different, but I suspect my eyes are playing tricks on me. One hour in, all of a sudden I can see the hair is visibly longer and seems to be continuing to grow. I must say, I'm very impressed. I'm a little confused. I decided to take a break. Smokey seems content to nap for a while. Can I get you a cup of tea, Professor? Oh no, I don't know how you can tolerate that foul stuff they brew up in the mess tent. I have my thermos of coffee here. Thank you. Fair enough, I'll be back in a bit. I've only been gone for 10 minutes. But as I enter with my mug of tea, I instantly notice a drama taking place in Smokey's cage. I find it hard to stifle a laugh. Oh my goodness, Professor, have you seen this? The professor looks up, exasperated by another interruption, but he notices the cage. Look at that fucking cat. Oh dear. Well, don't just stand there, fire. Get him out. I open the front <clears throat> of the cage and pull out the large fur ball that Smokey has turned into. And his fur tumbles over my arm and as I cradle the bewildered cat. Look, at, he looks so depressed. Well, I never. Very interesting, isn't it, fire? Uh, I think it's still growing, Professor. I do believe you're right. Perhaps we should consider the clippers. Professor hands me a small set of silver electronic clippers, and I immediately begin using them on the ever-expanding Smokey. I continue to shave for the next 15 minutes until he finally, finally seems to run out of fur. My, that's a lot of hair. We both stand staring at the pile of fur at our feet. Let's keep a small amount for testing and put the rest of it in the back. Or I can dispose of it later. Gamora? Miss Miracle. Excellent work today, Fire. Most interesting findings. I wouldn't say intriguing, apparently. Uh, thank you, sir. Although the results had nothing to do with me, I'm left finding, feeling a tad guilty about Smokey's ordeal. I place him back in his cage. I check for any signs of trauma. And when satisf satisfied he's okay, I awkwardly take my leave. Got some more research. That's really all I can do is research now. <clears throat> I'm ready. Oh, research nine. Poor socks doesn't seem to be getting any better. Time to put my. Oh no, poor kitty. I'm worried about socks. None of the treatments so far seem to be clearing up his wound. Cream 116 hasn't helped one bit. In fact, my gut feeling is telling me it may be the cause of the deterioration. The entire site is now swollen and too sore to touch, even with a soft cotton pad. I decided to ask Professor for his advice. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but I need your advice on socks. Send a pic, please. I set up a picture in my catalog and sent it to the Professor. Yes, that does look nasty. Have you tried Cream 116? I did. 
make the site worse, swollen and inflamed. I suggest persevering. Premium room six can take a while, but we'll pay off. I feel doubtful to resign myself to the Professor Simulator. If unsatisfied, try steroid for me on the fridge. Big bag. Red bag. I rummage around the fridge till I find the red bag behind the box of vitamin supplements. Got it. Thank you for your help, sir. I pour the milk into a small bowl and I'm relieved to see that Sock seems to like it. I sit with him as he laughs up and keeps an eye on him. Gonna keep an eye out for a while. After about an hour, I'm satisfied that he's sleeping happily and his vital stats are normal. I'm sitting in my bunk, looking around at the empty tent that has been my home for the past eight weeks, it's astonishing how much rubbish you can accumulate in such a short period of time. It's taken me hours, but I finally sorted everything out and my bag's packed. In some ways, I wish I was staying. I know if I'm going to make any more progress on the antidote, I will need expert help, the kind I can only get in mainland. So it's time to head out. There's just one last thing to do. I make my way to the place where Fluffy Butt and I spent so much time together, I was hoping I would find him here, nosing through his collection of treasures and artifacts. The hollowed out tree is, looks almost sad, neglected. I remain a safe distance to avoid the effects of the danger zone, but even from this far, I get a feeling that Major hasn't been here for a while. I'm gutted. I wanted to say goodbye in person. Major, are you here? When I'm satisfied he's nowhere around, I take a small pillow I made from one of my t-shirts. It doesn't seem a lot, but I put much, so much effort into making it. I stitched our names in a little heart. I drew some seagulls around the edges and stuffed it with catnip. I thought he might appreciate a bit of comfort with his advancing years. I only hope Snooty Booty doesn't get her claws into it. I place it at the foot of the mighty tree under the cu a couple of palm leaves and make my way to the dock without looking back. Joe, the strange boy who runs the ferry with his dad Bob, is waiting in the jetty. You're almost late! I'm not in the mood for his nonsense today. I feel miserable. But I'm not, though, am I, Joe? Almost late is not late. Something got your goat? I can warm and make my way into the boat. Fuck that kid. Then, just as we began navigating our way out in the open water, something on the land catches my eye. I can make out the shape of a fluffy orange blob waving from the end of the jetty. Oh my goodness! And I wave back frantically. Someone come to see you off? Yes. It's the Major. Bye, Major. It's been an adventure. I can't see no one. Did you go in a bit mental? Look, just there. The ball of orange. The Tomcat. Joe's gone very quiet. And when I glance at him, he's eyeing me suspiciously. Oh, that's a shame. What? Dad! Something wrong, son? This one's sick. I don't understand. I'm fine. Bob appears from the driver's cabin. That's alright, son. You go take care of the steering wheel, good lad. Joe does as dad told, leaving Bob and, and I face to face. Is there something wrong, Bob? I'm afraid there is. It's not personal. I happen to like you. He reaches into his pocket and is aiming something that looks like a pistol at me. I laugh nervously. Nervously, This must be some kind of prank. It's just, we can't have you going back to the mainland infected normal people, can we? Oh, shit. Before I can answer, everything goes black. I'm dead. Well... Fire died. That sucks.